Stretching springs is a classic physics practical. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that I do wear eye protection and that's just because uh, if the weight were to come off the spring, it might snap back and flick in my eye. So we've got a spring there, we're going to apply force to it and it's gonna get longer. Pretty straightforward so far. Now, uh, a few things I wanna talk about this experiment. Uh, first of all, going through the theory. Um, if you apply a force to a spring, it's going to extend it. And there's a point where we have this proportional relationship between the extension and the force being applied. And this happens up until we get to what we call a limit of proportionality. And sometimes just beyond this, we have the elastic limit. And actually what we find is when this is getting towards its limit, it might stretch non-proportionally, where the force isn't proportional to the extension, but it will still go back to its original shape. So what we're going to be looking at is this region where the force is proportional to extension. And also it's just worth pointing out that uh, different exam boards use a different letter for, it, for the extension. Sometimes they use delta L for that change in length. Sometimes it's X, sometimes it's delta X, sometimes it's a little e. It doesn't matter. What we're saying is that the force is proportional to the extension. And because we can say that um, F equals KX, where K is the spring stiffness or the spring constant, if we were to plot a graph with force on the y-axis and the extension on the x-axis, that means the gradient then would be F over X, which in this case is going to be the spring constant. So what we can do is we can uh, have a look at this spring, we can record the length of it, and then we can start adding masses onto it. Now, the force that's being applied is going to be equal to the weight uh, of this, uh, the masses underneath, uh, and we can just multiply. We can find that by um, recording the mass of each one, multiplying by g to get the weight, and therefore the force that's being applied to it. Now, this brings up uh, a few things. First of all, how do we accurately measure the length? Well, what we need, or what we can do, is maybe clamp a meter stick vertically, and to ensure it's actually vertical. I'm going to be using one of these. So this is kind of very much a good bit of practical procedure. We're going to be using a set square. Now, if we put the set square next to this, we can see that maybe if I just need to adjust this very slightly, we can now see that that ruler is vertical in this direction. And then I'm gonna take that set square and I'm gonna put it to the front to make sure it's not leaning forwards or backwards. So now we know that this ruler is definitely vertical. Another problem that you might face when it comes to this experiment is actually trying to get the ruler close enough to the thing that we're trying to measure. And what we want to do is make sure this is as close as possible. Now, sometimes that's not always easy to do. So what we could do is we could actually add a marker onto the thing that we're actually looking at. And you can see now, if we put this close to where um, the meter stick is, it's gonna be pointing to the right point and obviously this is something you can play around with with the setup that you're using in school and so what we have is this marker uh, that gives us a much more accurate way of reading the total length of that spring and what we're looking at isn't the length of the spring but it's the extension so that's the final length of the spring take away the initial length now once you've carried out uh, that experiment you can then do a bit more of an investigation uh, for example, uh, you might look at springs in parallel or springs in series. And again, you could plot this um, onto your graph and you could look at the relationship between the force and the extension if you've got identical springs in parallel, identical springs in series, and look at how that actually changes the spring constant. Oh, and I just thought I'd show you this lovely piece of equipment, which is ideal for investigating springs in parallel. And you can see that uh, as this is extended, as more weights are added onto it, it's quite easy to actually read off the final length of that spring. So this is ideal for getting some data, but whichever method you use, you're going to be getting a graph where you can plot the extension in meters against the force being applied in newtons. When you then work out the gradient from the line of best fit that you draw, and also this line of best fit will ensure that you've got this linear region, when you work out the gradient, the force divided by the extension, that's going to give you the spring constant in newtons per meter. So that's all there is to it really. Uh, the main thing to remember is that you do need to wear eye protection just in case the mass were to slip and then the spring were to flick into your eye. But yeah, there we go. Uh, that's how to investigate the behavior of springs.